Pinzi Amani is a young woman who loves God, who loves people, and is driven um, to pursue goals, her goals, her, her purpose in life, um, be it in ministry, be it in business. Um, I'm just a person who is driven to do what I'm supposed to do while I'm on this planet. I've been here for about eight years. I first arrived, when I first arrived in the U.S., I lived in Kansas City, then I moved to Orlando, had a little bit of layover in Indiana, then finally here in, Se uh, finally in Seattle, Washington. It's a different experience, just like every other experience. I mean, I don't, just like if you lived in Italy and lived in Runda, the experience will be completely different. Um, when I came to the United States, I really did not have a lot of expectations to what I was going to find. I was fresh out of high school, so I was just coming into life, you know, and it was whatever was handed to me, that's what I took. Um, yeah, which is not usually the answer what, that people expect because a lot of people expected the glamour. I, I did not. I, I didn't even think much about it to be honest. Oh, I miss my friends, definitely. Um, I miss the simple, there was just a way of life there. We all understood each other. I, I think it's just a cultural thing. We had a, we had a culture to us. We didn't need to explain ourselves. Like if I went to a hotel and I ate a chips pasua, Nobody would, would would question me, but so it's like Nimandazi. Let me speak Swahili for a minute. Yeah, Nimandazi, lafuna chukua chipone koko ndani, namwaga pili pili. So and then you, it's like a samosa, but it has French fries inside. Yeah, I I did all that. I did mbuta. I ate mbuta and muturazi le samosa zinazikuwa na what what was it called? Peas, minji. Nobody judged you. You know, if I was eating and it was poured all over me, that that was fine. Ain't nobody judging me. Well, I loved music from a very tender age. I started singing when I was five years old. Um, we would have functions at home and me and my cousins would do routine dances and, and we would sing together. Uh, I continued in school, I would perform during school functions, during CU, Christian unions, events and Sunday services. I, I, would, I would do all that, I would do a lot of dancing. So I was always very active in, in school. When it went on to high school, when I was in high school, I started writing music. That's when I wrote my first song. And then, uh, but it wasn't gospel, it was secular. Because at the time, I wasn't a Christian, of course. And then when I came into the United States, I actually ventured after receiving Christ and ventured into ministry. I did my first production late last year. That is when I first went into a recording studio. I didn't release it until early this year, which was around February. That's when I did uh, Pendulimitinia and Yahweh. Life, I can say it, it's inspired by what is going on in my life and in the life of people around me. Um, you know, it's experiences that I have had to which I pursue God and He then deposits a word. For Yahweh, it was um, a difficult time and I just felt like, you know, 
I didn't have a voice. I, I, I was helpless. I, I did not have uh, someone to defend me. I did not have someone to speak for me. And so I felt a sense of, you know, I know God is there, but I can't see him right now. You know, it's, it's just like Job had that experience where God was there, God had never left him, but he did not fully, he could not fully experience him because somewhere in the tug of, in the, in the midst of the battle, there was a tug of war where trust was lost. There was a time where he gave up, he gave up hope. And it, it dawned on me in that moment that had he asked for help, God would have helped him. And so I found myself in that position and, and so I did not need to give up hope. I could ask for help and God will help me. And that's how I came with that. Love. When did she want me? Sick it to Palin, equal love and pens in the low he see. Moy, oh, Papa JK. No one and we are Papa Samoy, oh, compensi. So gay, I to pen down and pensi. So gay, I look who he see. It's a very romantic song, and I know a lot of people find it peculiar because it's supposed to be a love song to God. And at first, I don't really mention him because we are talking on a first name. It's not, we're not calling each other names by our names at that time. It's, it's a romantic, I mean, it's, it's like a couple when they initially come together, they're, they're referring to each other by their first names or by their last names or whatever. But then there comes a time in their relationship as their relationship goes deeper, there's those moments of just there's a connection there's an intimacy that goes on between them that does not it it warrants them not to use the first names and they, they don't really need to explain themselves because there's that understanding between the two of them and it was a moment actually i wrote that song during a moment of prayer where i felt that connection with god and there was no need to for me to call him by his name or whatever because we already had an understanding in that moment and we were just connecting. I think a couple would be able to use that to reinforce their love. But for me, at that moment when I wrote that song and even when I sing it, I sing it to my God, the love of my soul. I didn't. I didn't pull it off. I didn't go looking. I didn't even imagine I would work with them. But God favored me. For me to be able to work with Billy Frank, it was simply the hand of God. Um, for me to be able to work with Jay Blessing, it was simply the hand of God. Um, I had a good experience working with Billy Frank. He's a very humble person. He listens. He allowed me to be myself in the studio, which is you know, it's, it's very, sometimes very difficult to find, but it, it, it was really good because he was able to not only help, allow me to be myself in the studio, but also he helped me develop the music to become what I wanted it to be. Um, he also is a very, he's 
big on excellence, like he's big on his timed, timely delivery of his work. He always kept in touch and, and told me what he was doing. I, with Jay Blessing, it was the same thing. He, very humble man, very kind man. Very easy to work with. I enjoyed working with him. It was a good experience. I'm still learning a lot about the music industry. And despite it being a ministry, there's, st there's still a lot of logistics that come into play and I'm still finding my way around those logistics. So sometimes I find myself in a pickle because I want to move it to a certain direction but I don't know how to get there. And, uh, but you know, God has been good. I mean, I've, I've, I've met people who have taught me great things. I've met Davis Chirwa who works with DC Productions. He's been a great consultant at assisting me in making sure that I know what I'm supposed to like I could, I could go to him and ask him questions and he will give me the answers that I need and that helps me a lot. I think here in the diaspora the number one thing is that you get so many distractions from trying to pay your bills to just trying to be to survive in this country sometimes you, you get distracted from from your hopes from your dreams and sometimes even not having the resources to get to do what to accomplish making a single record let alone an album um, sometimes it can derail you and make you feel like you don't you you're not gonna make it like you can't do it like it's not worth it but don't give up on yourself don't give up hope if you know that that's your calling, if you know that the production is, you need to produce music or you need to even act, you need to, to produce dance choreographies. I mean, there's other people who have made it. I haven't even made it. I personally encourage myself by looking at other people who have made it. And there is many tools, many people who are there to mentor and to help you, to give you direction. So don't give up hope. Pursue your dream, pursue your goals, pursue that which you know that God has called you to have and know that it's for you and nobody can take it away from you no matter what they say. Yeah. I, I would never want Penzi Amani to grow to be a brand name per se or a celebrity name, but more like a ministry. I want it to be a place of hope. Uh, the, the, the thing that um, I feel in my spirit that, that God has placed in my life is to take people who are hurting, people who feel isolated, they feel rejected, they feel like they don't have a hope and to direct them into a place of hope. And, and you'll even see that in my music, you'll see a trend. I, I personally have noticed a trend in my writing that in, in all of my music there is a an in-depth message of reconciliation from Yahweh. Yahweh is a song of, that lets a, an offended Christian know that they can come to God, that they've not been neglected. Jivinjari is a song that wants to bring a, a person that has not known God to God. Penzil Limetimia is a song saying that, yes, I have found the hope. Milele Daima is a song saying that, yeah, I'm enjoying this. This is the lover of my soul, it, it, it's good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So in the end, there is a hope for, and it doesn't matter what your history is, it doesn't matter what you did five minutes ago. Honey, God loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to draw you closer to himself. He has been yearning for you, you're to die for. He literally died for you, you know? And so that is what, that's the message that I want people to have, that at the end of the day, when I'm dead and gone, I want people to have that legacy. I, I want there to be that legacy, not even before people, but between me and God, that I brought that message of hope to mankind. Yes, but I'll let that be a surprise. My album is coming out soon. Pencil up, pencil up, pencil up.